Welcome to Luxoft Tech Talks, a series of podcasts in which IT gurus share their knowledge and discuss the latest trends and innovations in the world of IT. We are going to cover the most recent developments in the programming languages, frameworks, and technologies that are shaping the future of the software industry. This new format of online learning is part of Luxoft Learning Management and Development Services rebranding. Please share your feedback in the comments to let us know what speakers and topics you would like us to cover in later installments. Welcome everyone. And let's talk about today testing web accessibility. Uh, first of all, my name is Adrian. I'm from Spain, from Madrid. I'm the team lead of the web team at my company and I'm a front end developer and I'm a strong ad accessibility advocate. You can find me almost everywhere under my surname. So let's talk about accessibility first. I got always the same question. So what does uh, I11Y means? And this is the international acronym for accessibility because there is 11 letters between the A and the Y for accessibility. So why is this in the real world, these three situations completely wrong? Why so obvious? So in the first one, poor this, this man who's gonna go down very fast. In the second one, we have a tree in the middle of the accessibility ramp. And in the third one, we have a stairs at the end of a ramp. So this is completely wrong. So let me show you a different example of, of a wrong situation. So someone arrives in a wheelchair, press the accessibility button, and surprise, surprise, yeah, there are stairs. So why is this so obvious in the real world? But when we go to the online world, this is not that obvious to see. So let's imagine that you go to a online shop, an e-commerce website, and you call the support team because you want to know how to find your latest purchases. So the support, the help desk can tell you something like, you need to click in the button in the top right corner, or you want to change your email address. So they can tell you, you need to click in the button with the engine icon. But for blind people, there is no top right corner or there is no button with an engine icon. So we need to take care about these situations when we develop a, a website. Let me give you some numbers first. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were 7.6 billion people in the world and more than 1 billion people live with some form of visual impairment. So when we develop our website, our e-commerce, our product, we want to reach as much people as possible. So this is part of your audience as well. So I'm not gonna talk about developing web accessibility today. Um, I have another talk, so maybe you wanna watch it as well, but I'm gonna talk about how to make sure that your website is accessible. So let's see how can we test it. So I uh, automated tests can free up your your testing team from manual test every part of your application, but it's not magic. They cannot automatically make your site accessible. So using automate tests, you, you need to understand it as a part of a larger testing process where manual test is equally important. We cannot forget that only 20 to 50% of all accessibility issues can be automatically detected. So I've created a simple application in React with three very small, tiny components. Uh, one is a button. The second one is a fake button, which is an anchor link with the role button. And the third one is an image. And in the entry point of the application, I put a bunch of errors, a bunch of accessibility vulnerabilities. So let's see if we can find. So let's, let's start testing accessibility while you are in the development process. You can test while you are coding. So uh, Dequi uh, Labs created a family of tools called Axe or AXA, and one of them are the React plugin for that. So you can install this library as a developer dependency in your project, in your React project, 
and you need to be sure that you call the exported function only in a, in a development environment and not in a production environment. So you can run the Axe engine over your application. As a result, you will see uh, the, uh, every vulnerability, every violation that you have in your code, you will see them in the developer tools on your browser. They are grouped if they are more than one violation, and they have the severity level as well attached. So it's minor, moderate, serious, or critical. A good thing for this tool is the Dequay has a website called dequayuniversity.com, which is the documentation of these issues. So in every violation, you will have a direct link to the documentation, and you will find uh, resources on how to fix these problems. As well, you will see what is the error and where is the error in your code. As well, we can use linters. Linters in the code editor that you're using or in the IDE that you're using. So in this case, I'm using an ESLint uh, linter and I'm using the plugin for accessibility. So you can configure the rules you want to use under the ESLint TRC uh, JSON file. So ESLint RC JSON file, or maybe with the line number 12, which is a extends the plugin recommended rules would be enough, but I prefer to extend every rule with my own config. Uh, as every linter, you will see the issues that's played directly in the code editor. And as well, you will see these issues displayed in the terminal when you run the application. The third possibility you have, and probably is my favorite one, is writing your own unit tests. So you can use Yest, which is a library to write unit tests for JavaScript. And for the Axe family, as we said before, you have a plugin for Yest. So you, again, you need to install it as a developer dependency in your project. And you can write your accessibility unit test using the React DOM server. What, is, uh, what the React DOM server is doing is to uh, render to a string the whole application and then you're gonna uh, expect not to have any violation. So when you run the test in the terminal, you will see again, what is the violation, where is in, the, in your DOM structure, and as well, you will have a direct link to the Deque University, where you can have again, the documentation and the resources to fix this violation. So let's say that you are done with your development process or you inherit a code base. So you want to test the whole DOM structure as a one thing. So Dequay as well has a CLI, is a terminal a tool, and you need to install it globally. And you can run uh, with the command axe and the URL that you want to um, you want to analyze. And it's going to run a, a Chrome hot, uh, headless instant and it's gonna uh, analyze the code. Again, as we saw in the React Axe, you will see what is the violation, where is in the DOM structure, and as well, again, the direct link to the documentation. A very, very similar application, or a very similar uh, tool that you can use for testing your application is PI11Y. So again, you need to install it globally, and as well as Axe, you you need to use it over the terminal and you will see again what is the violation, what is the principle or the standard that is violated, the whole DOM structure and the exact element where the issue is found. But since this uh, library is not developed by Dequay, you don't have this directly into the documentation. And as well, you can run this over your local host so you don't need to upload or you don't need to release this to any server to be able to test it. A very good thing from this library is that they have a CI. So sometimes you can, you may say, um, I have a lot of URLs, a lot of website to test and I cannot go one by one. So you can make a JSON file with some config. 
So in the first case, in line number three, I have a pure URL. In the second object, I'm applying a timeout of 50 seconds, and I'm taking a screenshot of the test. And in the third one, which is the interesting one, I can perform actions in my website. So I can wait for um, an element with a certain class or an ID to be loaded. I can navigate and I can take screen captures. So what I'm doing here is executing just the command pi11y-ci. It's gonna look for my JSON file in the root of my application. It's gonna execute three times the test, so one per uh, URL uh, using the config uh, that I'm passing. And it's gonna take these screen captures that I set uh, in the config. As well, you will see the results of the analysis, again, with what is the error and where is in the DOM structure. And in the root structure of the application, you can see the captures on the bottom. And for the last one, we have a Lighthouse. Lighthouse is a tool developed by Google, and it is included in the Chrome developer tools in the Chrome browser but as well you can use it uh, via the terminal. So again, again, as the last one, you have to install it globally in your, in your machine. And then you can use the das das view uh, parameter flag. So after the result, you will see a full re uh, report about it. So the difference with the other ones is the other ones uh, run a headless uh, Chrome uh, or browser instance. This one is going to run a full um, browser instance. And it's going to perform a lot of tests. Uh, accessibility is going to perform SEO, performance, low internet, responsiveness. And at the end, it's going to generate an HTML report where you can uh, see all your scores and the violations that you have, as well as some documentation on how to fix these errors. Uh, Lighthouse uh, allows you, I, I think I already talked about the main features of every tool, but to end up with Lighthouse, you can as well save the, the full report into a JSON file or a CSV, a comma separated values, and you can use it for reporting purposes or for automating those tests in the in the release or in the in the production pipeline. And but as I said before, uh, only twenty to fifty percent of the issues can be tackled by um, automated tests. So manual tests is really important as well. So I'm going to show you some extensions on how to test in the browser manually. One, again, from the Axe family from Dequay is the Axe Chrome extension. You can find it under the developer tools. And you can perform a analysis. And it's going to analyze the whole website. It's going to say, where is the error? What is the error? And instead of giving you a link of the Dequay University, it's going to give you all the information to solve the problem. A very similar one is the R ARC toolkit by the Pacello group. You can find that as well under the developer tools. You can perform the, all the tests. You can see them grouped by media, structure, keyboard, and area. And if I click in images, you will see in this example, what images doesn't have any alt text. You can go directly to the image. And as well, you can see them highlighted in the window. So it's very beneficial for you to see where the error are, where the errors are. Uh, accessibility inside is one of the latest that they updated uh, from Brightwave. And uh, I think it's one of the most uh, complete ones. Uh, and you can uh, see this tab structure. So the map of how a user will, will tap through your website. So you can see if the content is um, 
coherent and it makes sense uh, with the uh, with the is relevant for the content of your website. So this this order is relevant for the content of your website. And as I said, Wave is one of the latest that uh, was updated, and I think it's very very complete. It has as well uh, the tab order, but um, they will perform a full analysis in your website. You can see all the errors. In this case, missing alt text in the images. Uh, you can see the header structure that is very useful as well for SEO. You can see the contrast ratios on the colors. As well, you can deactivate all styles in your website. So you can see if the HTML structure, again, is relevant for the content. You can see the code of the website, so you can analyze it as well from the developer's perspective. Uh, I think it's a very, very complete tool to test. And we have no coffee. No coffee is, doesn't perform any tests, but it's a simulator. So you need to simulate as well how people with uh, any kind of impairment, visual impairment can see your website. So someone who, for, for example, doesn't have the glasses with him or her uh, will see the website. Or maybe there is people with color deficiency or any kind of color blindness. For example, uh, protanopia. So they will see a distortion of the colors or maybe directly with no colors at all. Same, any other visually a color, color blindness. As well as um, glaucoma, which is the peripheral vision or corner vision, side vision, or maybe some large spots in the, in the retina. And you can simulate the effect of someone with these uh, impairments to see your website. So this is the summary of the tools that I daily use to test the accessibility of the applications that I develop. I, I, what I want you to, to take from, from this talk is that they exist. Then you can test it and play around. They are very powerful and they are very, very useful. So if you want to take a look of the code of the application that I create, it's under my GitHub. The slides of, the, of my talk are under my speaker deck. There is a new uh, course officially by the W3C, which is an introduction to web accessibility. It is not only for technical people, so I recommend you to do it, to get familiar with accessibility. And I would love to leave with a couple of sentences. And one from Trenton Moss said, it's not just about disabled users being able to access your website. It's about everyone being able to access your website. Sometimes you don't have your glasses with you. Sometimes you broke your screen or you have your kit in your hand and you need to use your computer with only one hand. You need to be able to use every website, even if you are disabled or not because accessibility is never a feature and we cannot consider as a feature. We need to include accessibility testing in our daily development process. So we need to consider accessibility when we develop and when we test. And that's it. Thank you very much.